In this video, we're going to introduce absolute value inequalities. Now, if you've been sort of on cruise control in your math class, uh, you might want to uh, pause and just uh, be ready for something a little different because absolute value inequalities don't work exactly how our common sense might want them to work. OK, let's dive in with a, a little exploration here. Uh, we're going to find some values that satisfy each of these inequalities. So for instance, uh, if x equals 3, that, that would satisfy this inequality because the absolute value of 3 is less than 4. Like the number 1 and the number 0, those numbers are certainly less than 4. And then also, uh, there's some negative numbers that also work because the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So that's less than 4. But uh, once we get to a number like negative 5, well, the absolute value of negative 5 equals positive 5. And positive 5 is not less than 4. So that doesn't work. And notice that negative 4 and positive 4 don't work either because there's no equal bar underneath that inequality sign. All right, likewise here, uh, number, so we want the absolute value of x to be less than or equal to 2. Now notice there is an equal bar here, so 2 certainly works there because the absolute value of 2 is less than or equal to 2. And 1 and 0, uh, negative 1 would certainly work here because the absolute value of negative 1 equals positive 1, and that's less than or equal to 2. And negative 2 also works. But notice that uh, negative 3 does not because the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, and that is not less than 2. So let's cross that off. And then same thing with like positive 3, positive 4. OK, and then now we're switching the inequality direction. Now we want the absolute value of x to be greater than 3. So numbers, so 3 doesn't work because 3 is not greater than 3. But 4 would work. And 7, numbers like that, or the absolute value of those are greater than 3. Let's see here. Um, numbers like uh, 0 would not work, or 1, because those are not greater than 3. But uh, if we had negative 4, well, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. And that is greater than 3. Or negative 8, that would certainly work also, because positive 8 is greater than 3. Um, here, same thing, uh, greater than or equal to 1. So same idea, but now we're going to include 1 and negative 1. So positive 1 is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, positive uh, 6 be greater than or equal to 1. Uh, negative 1, well, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, and that is greater than or equal to positive 1. And uh, negative uh, 10, the absolute value of that is positive 10, which is greater than or equal to 1. OK, so we're just exploring some values here that satisfy the inequality. Now let's take that same idea with the same inequalities and graph them. So the absolute value of x is less than 4. The numbers that we found in the previous exploration were the numbers between 4 and negative 4, not including 4 and negative 4. So I'm going to put an open point at positive 4 and an open point at negative 4. And it was all of the numbers in between 4 and negative 4 that satisfied that inequality. So I'm going to highlight everything between negative 4 and positive 4. All right, less than or equal to 2. Same idea there, but now we're including the border points. So the uh, I'll have closed points instead of open points. At negative 2 and positive 2. And it was all the numbers in between positive 2 and negative 2, including the border points. So we have a graph of the absolute value of x is less than 4, and the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 2. Now let's switch the direction of the inequality. So for the absolute value of x is greater than 3, now notice there's no equal bar, so we're not including 3 and negative 3. So we'll just put open points there. And thinking back to our first exploration, it was the numbers out here and out here. 
that satisfy that absolute value inequality. So we notice with a greater than sign, the arrows are facing away from each other. Same thing here, except now the border points are included. So we'll have a closed point at one and negative one, but it's the numbers that are greater than one and less than negative one that satisfy the absolute value inequality. Now let's solve each of these absolute value inequalities. So if you think back to the graph, it was all the numbers in between four and negative four. So one way to think of this is we could say x is in between four and negative four. Or I could read this negative four is less than x, which is less than four. And that's a good way to write the solution to this absolute value inequality. And notice the direction of the inequalities. And we can actually split, the, split that up into two different inequalities. We could say x is less than 4, and x is greater than negative 4. So notice that the mouth in between the negative 4 and the x is about to eat the x. Same thing here. So I had to switch the direction, but it, this means the same thing as the left side of, of this portion here. So th this means the same thing, but normally we write our inequalities when we have a, when we start with a less than, we write it this way, with x in between four and negative four. Okay, same thing here. The absolute value of x is less than or equal to two. So thinking back to the graph, x was between two and negative two, including those endpoints. So it'll be the same thing as we had here, but this time we'll have x is in between negative two and positive two, including those endpoints. Now the alternative way would be to write x is less than or equal to two and x is greater than or equal to negative two. Now a little more um, commentary on this. What the word and means in mathematics is both of these two things have to be true. So for instance, the number negative 100 is less than or equal to two, but negative 100 is not greater than or equal to negative two. So it does not satisfy this and statement here. So with the word and in math, you need to satisfy both. All right, over here, Thinking back to the graph of the absolute value of x is greater than three, this is where the arrows are facing away from three and negative three. Now in this one, we don't write it together like this. Instead, we just write, write it this way, except instead of using the word and, we use the word or. So we just say x is greater than three or x is less than negative three. And that's, how we write our answers when the inequality is greater than. Now, remember, this is we're only doing this fancy stuff because it's absolute values we're working with here. So don't get it mixed up with just regular inequalities. All right, so with greater than, we'll be using the word or. So this means x is either greater than three or less than negative three. It doesn't have to be both, just either one. Um, okay, so same thing here, except now we'll be including the uh, endpoints. So we have x is greater than 1, or x, excuse me, missed that equal bar there. x is greater than or equal to 1, or x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now, notice a couple of things on this first one, on both cases. I just wrote it exactly like I did here just without the absolute value bars. And then on the second one, I wrote it without the absolute value bars, but I did two things. I flipped the inequality and I changed the sign of the number on the right side. So two things with these or statements. I flipped the inequality and changed the sign of the number on the right side.
a couple of special cases here. So we can have an absolute value inequality with no solution. Like if we had the absolute value of x is less than negative three. Well, the absolute value of a number is always positive. So it's going to be impossible for that to be less than negative three. So we just say no solution in that case. So always be on the lookout for those. And then here we have another case where we have x is greater than negative six. Well, that's always true no matter what, because no matter what number we put in there, like negative 17, the absolute value of that is positive 17. That is greater than negative six. So there's infinitely many solutions on that. And that's how we just write our answer there. So if you have an absolute value is less than a negative number, it's no solution. If it's greater than a negative number, it's infinitely many solutions. All right, I hope this introduction to absolute value inequalities has been helpful. Next step will be to solve absolute value inequalities. But for now, we're just setting the stage with this introduction. This is Mr. Ela, signing off.